Do you want to know what that engine code printed on the side of the rocket means? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. One of the most common questions in model rocketry is what does that engine code printed on the side of the casing stand for and how do you use it to pick a motor for your rocket? Well, I'm going to try to explain that. The first letter, um, say here on this rocket right here, I have a, a C63. This letter tells us the relative power of the motor. In rocketry, we use A, B, C, D, the letters of the alphabet, to explain power. So whenever you go from one letter to the next, it doubles in power. So a B motor has half the power of a C motor. This is a B motor. And the way they do that is by filling it up to a different level inside the rocket. Now they can go down. So an A motor has half the power of a B motor or one quarter the power of a C motor. So what this really means is if your A motor, if your rocket with an A motor goes approximately 100 feet, if you put a B motor in it, it'll approximately go 200 feet. It doubles in power. You can go twice the distance. A C motor is going to go twice that of a B, about 400 feet, in a given particular rocket. Here on the table, I have a variety of rockets from the smallest to the largest. So I already had A's, B's, and C's, which are right here. Um, you can go smaller than that. Smaller than an A would be a half of an A, and this motor right here is labeled half A. You can go half of that again as well. And so this small motor is a one quarter A. And then half of that, which is the smallest motor available in rocketry, is an eighth of an A. And these are pretty much uh, for variety and for very, very small launch areas, uh, like a backyard. But typically in model rocketry, the, the smallest that we use is a quarter A. And then it goes up from there. You can go a D, which is twice as powerful as the C motor. And again, they filled the casing all the way up. But in order to get twice the propellant inside, they had to go to a larger diameter. And then there's the E motor, which again, compared to the D motor, is a lot longer. And then the F motor is even longer still. And the F motor is about the biggest you'll find in a black powder motor. But you can go higher than that to a G motor in composite propellant, which is a different propellant, which will be for a different video. So that's the first letter. The first number indicates the average thrust of a rocket motor, and it's measured in newtons. So this rocket motor right here is an A83, so it has an average thrust of 8 newtons. Now when you go to pick motors, you're not going to say, I need a rocket that has exactly 8 newtons or 9 newtons or 10 newtons. It's a relative number. The bigger the number, the higher the thrust. The smaller the number, the lower the thrust. So here is an A10. So it has an average thrust of 10 newtons. And then next to it, here is an A3. They're going to go approximately the same height, approximately. But this is where aerodynamics plays a role. An A10, what it means is it's got a higher thrust, so the rocket's going to take off faster than the A3. So think of it as how much pressure you're putting on the accelerator pedal of your car. If you push down just a little bit, you're going to take off nice and slow. If you stomp on it, you're going to accelerate really fast. So if you want to go fast, use a higher number. And if you want to go slow, use a lower number. Also, uh, when the rocket takes off, because it's going slower, it's going to weathercock a little bit 
more. So here's a video of two rockets taking off. And I tried to get them to take off exactly at the same time, but one of the igniters took a little bit longer to heat up. So don't think that a smaller number means that it's going to take off slower when you push the button. That's not the case. It just happened this igniter didn't take off like right away like the other motor, the A10. But notice the trajectory of the rockets. The A10 took off first and it went fairly straight, but the A3 started weather cocking into the wind. So you have to remember that when you take off slower, you're going to weather cock a little bit more. If you have a windy day, you probably want a higher thrust motor. And if it's a nice calm day, you can go with a lower thrust motor. The other thing about a lower thrust motor is because you're traveling slower, the drag on the rocket is lower. And what this actually means is that the lower thrust is actually going to go a little bit higher than the one with high thrust. So if you want to go high, choose a motor that has low thrust. But if it's windy, you're going to lose a lot of altitude because it's weather cocking into the wind. So in that case, you might want to go with the higher thrust motor. Again, this is relative. So you have to look at the motors that you have available and then choose from that. So you don't say, I need, an a, I need a three second average thrust motor. No, you say, what's the launch conditions today? Is it going to be calm? Then I'm going to use a low thrust motor. And if it's windy, I want to use a high thrust motor. Or if my rocket is heavy, now I need more oomph to get it going. It's, this is called inertia. Uh, when, you know, when you're pushing like a car, it takes a lot of effort to get it to move because it's heavy. But once it's moving, then you can sustain it pretty good. But so when the rocket takes off, you want, on a big heavy rocket, you want a high thrust to get it moving. And then it will travel nice. Okay, so now that's the, the first number in the code. The second number, which is always after the dash, is the delay in seconds. It's measured in seconds. And this allows the rocket to coast. Because what happens when the rocket takes off, it burns its propellant. And the highest velocity of the rocket is right about when the rocket burns out, when it consumes all the propellant inside the motor casing. At that point, the rocket could be going over 200 miles an hour. But you do not want to kick out your parachute at that point because it's going to just shred the parachute. So we want the rocket to coast. We want it to slow down so that when we do push out the parachute, it's at a nice slow speed and the parachute survives. And also the rocket can coast higher into the air. So that last one tells us how long it's going to coast. Um, so here I have a C63. And then next to it, I have a C65. So these are both C6 motors. And they have about the same amount of propellant in it. But the C63 is going to eject earlier in the flight than the C65. Sometimes that could be good. Sometimes that can be bad. So here's what you're gonna, you want to consider. So if your rocket is lightweight, you want it to coast longer. If it's a heavier rocket, you want to use a shorter delay. Also, if it's windy, you might want to use a shorter delay. Because what's going to happen on a windy day? Your rocket's going to take off and it's going to arc into the wind. And it's not going to go as high. It's going to go this way. So the amount of delay is going to be lower because you're not coasting as high. So on a windy day, shorter delay. On a calm day, a little bit longer delay will be OK. If you go too long, the rocket can come over the top and be coming back down when the parachute is ejected. So there's another motor called a C67, has a seven second delay, which is really long. And typically those will come over the top and eject on the way down. So those are good for really, really lightweight rockets or rockets that are on two stage. On a two stage rocket, you have two motors pushing and so you can coast a lot further. So if you have a motor that has a zero on it, like this one right here, this is an A8-0. That means that the ejection charge will fire immediately after the propellant is consumed. So that's the starting point. When the, when the motor is done consuming the propellant, that's when the delay starts. So if it's a zero second delay, 
it immediately kicks out the ejection charge. So if at the three second, it'll, it'll go, it'll burn out, and then it will start counting one, two, three, and then it will kick out the parachute. So that is the simplistic version of what the code means and how you use it to pick rocket motors. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated from there. There's other letters on the motors, like this one here has a T on it. And this one right here um, is an FJ motor, which is a, a type of propellant, but we won't get into that. If you want to know more about that, come to the Apogee website at www.apogeerockets.com and then just pick the motor first because you're always going to pick the motor based on the engine code and then the other letters will tell you what kind of propellant it might be in there. But this is going to guide you on how the rocket is going to fly. So my name is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.